Good afternoon. Welcome to the Taunton Center of Bristol Community College. As today we have NJCAA Region 21 Division III basketball as the Bristol Community College Bayhawks take on the UConn Avery Point Pointers. I'm Keith Tebow. Thank you for joining us on this Saturday afternoon. This is the uh, first home game for the Bayhawks since the break, actually, and their second game since the holiday break. They played this week and they defeated Eastern Nazarene by a score of 98 to 70. Bayhawks come in at nine and five. The uh, pointers come in, UCAP comes in with a record of three and 11. They've actually already had two games this week on Tuesday and Wednesday, losing to Southern Maine and to Quincy College earlier this week. Before we get started, we want to bring you right now a short interview I had with head coach Brian Fernandes previewing today's game. Thank you for joining us pre-game before today's contest between the Bristol Bayhawks and UConn Avery. I'm pleased to be joined by head coach Brian Fernandes. Coach, Happy New Year. How are yes, you? Yes, Happy New Year. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for having me today. Really excited. You know, it's been a while since we got an update on the team. Uh, you're pretty much at the halfway mark, right? Uh, you know, around the break, you played about 12, 13 games, you got about 13 games left. How do you, you know, envision the team thus far? Yeah, correct. Yeah, really excited. Obviously, it's our halftime uh, break. Uh, I was really proud of our first semester. I thought we worked really hard. Uh, ended up with a finishing record, uh, a winning record, 4-0 uh, at home, um, and we uh, currently sit fourth place in the standings, uh, which is really a, um, a first round uh, home game for the playoffs. So we're in a good position, uh, but it's important for us to finish strong, uh, and that's what we plan to do today, uh, playing UCAP Avery Point, which is a, a obviously, as you know, a regional game uh, as we look to maintain our status uh, in the standings. Um, you actually had a game just on Thursday night uh, Eastern Nazarene, uh, another win. So now the team overall, I believe, is nine and five. Correct. Yep, nine and five. Uh, we are six and four in the conference. Right. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, now we're sitting at four and zero at home and five and five on the road. Yeah. Um, so looking to keep that that winning streak at home alive. And one of the good things as we look toward the second half of the season is, as we speak today, there are, I believe, thirteen games left. Nine are at home. That's a big deal, right? Yeah, yeah, really exciting. You know, the same thing happened last year. So we don't want to, you know, we don't want to bank on that. We want to do our work, you know, daily here. Uh, and that's why these practices and these games are really important. But we do have a good stretch at home. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, we've been playing pretty well at home. So, you know, we look to keep that momentum going. How's uh, the buy-in been from the team? Um, you know, a lot of road games early on can be taxing, especially as you get toward December. Students have finals, a lot going on. Sure. Seems like they handled it well. Yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great question. You know, I, I think it really starts from our leadership. You know, we have two really great captains that were with us last year uh, who dealt with some of our struggles, uh, and they've really just starts at the top. You know, these guys really have led us um, in practice. Uh, we've had really good practices, you know, from the jump. Um, and then these road games, to your point, has really challenged us early, and I think it's actually helped us, you know, as the season progresses. And uh, what can you tell us about UConn Avery? I, I believe, looking at their schedule, they've had a little struggle this year. They do, but they're a very competitive team. As you know, they have a little bit of a military background there, being Avery Point. Um, so we're always in, a, always in a tough game with them. I know they're going to compete very hard. Uh, they actually have a couple notable wins this year. Um, it's our first time playing them, so you never know, right? You never know. It's tough to game plan for a team the first time you play them. Uh, and as you know, we play each conference team twice. Um, so we're able to play them at home here. Uh, hopefully we come out with good energy. Uh, we were a little bit slow in our first first game there uh, on Thursday night. The uh, first half was a little bit rocky for us. We got off to a slow start, and then we had a, you know, a fantastic second half. Uh, so the keys to today's game is getting off to a, a fast, uh, strong start, uh, and then let that momentum kind of ride into the game. All right, let's see how it works out. Coach, yeah. I appreciate it. Of course, I appreciate everything you guys do for us, uh, and let's keep going. Go Bayhawks. Thanks. Thanks to Coach uh, Brian Fernandes for joining us for our Pre-game show here at uh, Bristol Community College's Taunton Center getting set for today's action between UConn, Avery Point, and the Bayhawks. As you mentioned in the interview, uh, the Bayhawks actually have a, a pretty good advantage as we head to the second half of the season as this is their own, only their fifth home game of the year. They are perfect at home at 4-0, but out of their final 13 games, nine of those games will be here at the Taunton Center. And that bodes well for the Bayhawks as they move forward. And when you look at their schedule, again, there was a big break between December and today, but there was equally a, uh, a, a big break after this game as the Bayhawks play today. And then they have another 10 days off before they are back in action. And then as we head toward the end of January and into February, 
They are playing quite a few games, and many of them, as we said right here, nine of their final 13 will be here at, uh, at home at the Taunton Center of Bristol Community College. Looking ahead to, uh, to this afternoon's game, the starting lineups for UConn Avery. Lucas Strain, number one. Devon Benjamin, number two. Number 11, Trevor Buchanan. Number 12, Jeff Sovenens. And number 22, Michael Wagner. Those are the starting five for the pointers. For the Bayhawks, they're going to be led out by Marcus Pina, number three. Aiden Rock, one of their co-captains, number 10. Camden Morin, number 22. Curran Farnworth, number 23. And leading scorer, Marcus White, 24. Those are the lineups for this afternoon's game. As we said, the Bayhawks come in at 9 and 5 winning their last two games, and UConn Avery coming in with a record of 3-11. and 11. All right, we are set to begin. It is going to be Cam Morin tipping off with Jeff Sovenants. And we are underway. Tip control by the Bayhawks. Farnworth, Marcus Pina, now White. Farnworth's going to take a three from the far side. No good. Rebound by Sovenance for UCAP. Pointers come back. Sovenance ends, puts up a shot off the glass and in. 2 nothing. UConn Avery. White comes back the other way. No good. Gets his own rebound, rebound and the putback. 2-2. Lucas Strain. Wagner. Sovenants. Now Buchanan with the short jumper and it goes. 4-2 UConn Avery just underway here. One minute played this afternoon. Rock off the glass and in. We are tied at four. Lucas Strain, Bayhawks in a man-to-man -man defense to start things off. Wagner has it stolen away by Aiden Rock. They get a two-on-one, White for two. 6-4, Bayhawks on top. Strain in the corner now. Long three is gonna be good. Michael Wagner with the three. And UConn Avery has a 7-6 lead. Rock in the lane. Has it blocked, but there's a foul. A foul is going to be on Michael Wagner. That's his first and the team's first. And Aiden Rock, one of the Bayhawks co-captains, on the line to shoot two. Makes the first. Second one is up and in as well. 8-7, Bayhawks on top. We've played two minutes here in the first half. Devon Benjamin being guarded by Farnworth. Buchanan off the strain. Back to Benjamin. Baseline jumper, no good. Rebound is up. It's going to be a jump ball. So it will go to UConn Avery. Sovenance has the ball on the far side. Buchanan looks to drive off the glass. No good. Rebound. Farnworth for the Bayhawks. Long outlet pass to Rock for two. 10-7 Bayhawks. Strain looks to drive all the way. No good. Rebound. Farnworth. 
Again, long outlet pass, Rock. 10 points for Aiden Rock. And the ball comes away again. White will come back the other way for two. And Yukon Avery is gonna call a timeout. 17.06 left to go here in the first half and the Bayhawks have run off eight straight points and they lead by a score of 14 to seven. So thus far, only two Bayhawks have scored. Aiden Rock has eight points. I apologize, I said 10 points earlier, he has eight. And Marcus White has six for the Bayhawks. For UConn Avery, Michael Wagner with three, Jeff Sevenance with two, and Trevor Buchanan with two points. As Bayhawks defense thus far, clamping down on the pointers and forced a few turnovers. And as I said, they're on an 8-0 run. UConn Avery did have a 7-6 lead just a few moments ago, and the Bayhawks has, have rattled off the last eight points of this ball game. UConn Avery has the same five starters coming back out, and the Bayhawks do as well. Strain. Bounce past Buchanan. Looks for room, drives, puts up a shot, got it. Four points now for Trevor Buchanan, it's 14 to nine. White for three. Off the mark, no good. Rebound, rebound rather by Buchanan for UCAP. Buchanan, Benjamin looks to drive, has it partially blocked, but they're gonna call a foul underneath. And that's gonna be on Marquise Pina. That's his first, and the first for the Bayhawks. And it's gonna be a shooting foul, so Devon Benjamin will be on the line to shoot two. First shot, front irons it. Second shot is good. First point of the game for Benjamin, and it is a four point Bayhawks lead, 14 to 10. Pina, baseline jumper, got it. First two points for Marquise Pina, and the Bayhawks are back up by six. Strain looks to drive. Up, no good, partially blocked. Ball will be knocked out of bounds, and it will be Bayhawk basketball. White, Farnworth is swinging around. Pina for three in the corner. Off the mark, no good. Benjamin with the rebound. Buchanan, rather, with the rebound. Buchanan looks to drive and is fouled on the way through to the basket. Trevor Buchanan on the line to shoot two. That foul was on Marquise Pina. That's his second, he's gonna come out. And Hayden Caton comes in the game for the Bayhawks, number five. Buchanan makes one of two, rebound Aiden Rock. Rock. Farnworth passes up the three. In the corner, White will take the three. And in and out, no good. Sovenance with the rebound. And quickly there's a tie up 
And they're going to call a foul on the Bayhawks. Foul is going to be on Hayden Caton. That's his first and the team's third. UConn gets the ball in. Lucas Strange being guarded by Caton. Benjamin. Jumper good by Wagner. And it's a three point ball game. 16 13, Bayhawks on top. White will take another three from the corner. In and out again, no good. Benjamin with the rebound for UCAP. Wagner will take a three off the mark, no good. Farnworth with the board for the Bayhawks. White, instead of taking the shot, will drive it. Dishes out to Caton. White again looks to drive. Inside pass to Rock. Morin back to Rock. 10 on the shot clock. White puts up the shot, no good. And Buchanan has the rebound. Seven inch, wide open three, got it. We are tied at 16. Caton in the corner. Farnworth will take a three, no good off the mark. Morin with the rebound, loses the handle, and Strain comes up with it with UCAP. That's stolen away now by White. Morin off the glass and in, and a foul. First two points for Cam Morin. And that foul is going to be on Lucas Strain, his first second for UCAP. And Morn will try to complete a three-point play. And he does. Bayhawks back up by three, 19-16, 13-40 left to go here in the first half. Stolen away. Morin looks to drive, but UConn Avery comes back. Caton will take a shot and hit it. First two points for Hayden Caton. And the Bayhawks are up by five, 21 to 16. Long shot by Buchanan is short. Farnworth with the rebound. White. Now Caton. Long pass, Farnworth now inside to Rock. Back out to Caton, he's gonna take a three, and it's off the mark, no good. Rebound now, Rock off the glass and in, and another foul. <laughs> foul is gonna be on Trevor Buchanan, that's his first, and the third team foul for UCAP. Rock looks to complete the three-point play, and he does. And the Bayhawks have a eight point lead in the ball game now for UConn Avery as Bradley St. Louis, number 13. St. Louis looks to drive, puts up the short jumper, air ball, no good, rock with the rebound. And the Bayhawks come back the other way. Morin. White, long three, drains it. Marcus White has nine points. And yeah, there's gonna be a foul on the floor. It's gonna be against Aiden Rock. That's Aiden's first foul and the fourth on the Bayhawks. Trevor Buchanan comes back in the game for UCAP. And Devon Benjamin sits out. 
Jeff Sevenance on the line will shoot two. No good on the first, but Strain gets the rebound. Sevenance back up and in. Seven points for Jeff Sevenance, and it's a seven point game. 27 to 20, 12 minutes left to go here in the first half. Ball inside is stolen away by UCAP. Wagner for three, off the mark, no good. Buchanan with the rebound. There's going to be a foul on the floor against the Bayhawks. That's going to be against Hayden Caton. That's Caton's second foul and the sixth on the team. Referees talking to the scorer's table. Check that that is the fifth team foul. And Strain will inbound the ball for UCAP. Sevenance looks to drive, puts it up off the glass, no good. Rebound taken by Farnworth. Farnworth drives, now pulls the ball back. White, Morin. Inside Rock, reverse layup is good. Two more for Aiden Rock, and it's a nine-point lead for the Bayhawks, 29-20. Offensive foul on UCAP. That is going to be on Lucas Drain. That is his second, fourth on UCAP. Carvin's garb comes in now for the Bayhawks, number four. And Hayden Caton will take a break. White drives, dishes off. Rock will take a three from the other corner, no good. Rebound, seven inch for UCAP. Wagner has it blocked from behind by Rock. He gets it back and puts up the jumper. That won't go. Rebound, Marcus White for the Bayhawks. Rock, another two. 11 point lead for the Bayhawks, 31 to 20. Strain will take a three, off the mark, no good. Marcus White with the rebound. He'll go all the way, it, that won't go. Rebound by Buchanan. And the ball is out of bounds off Buchanan's leg. It will be Bayhawk basketball. St. Louis comes out for UCAP and Benjamin comes back in. Garb will take a long three off the mark, no good, tipped up. Rebound taken by Sevenance for UConn Avery. He comes back all the way. No good. Tipped up Rock with the rebound for the Bayhawks. Garb. Baseline. White along three. Yep. 34-20. Bayhawks with their biggest lead. And Sevenance stepped on the sideline. And that's a turnover. It'll be Bayhawk basketball. 9.23 left to go here in half number one. UConn Avery now looks like they're playing more of a man-to-man -man defense. Now they settle back in the zone. White, no good, gets his own rebound, but there's a foul underneath.
foul is on Trevor Buchanan, his second, team's fifth. And it's gonna be a two shot foul for Marcus White. Gets the first. White has 13 points here in the first half. Make that 14. And it's a 16 point Bayhawk lead. Nine minutes left in the first half. Wagner has it stolen away. Rock, two more. <laughs> 17 first half points for Aiden Rock. Bayhawks up by 18. Benjamin puts up a wild shot, gets his own rebound. Turn around, jumper, that won't go. And the Bayhawks come down with it. As in the game now is Cole Pimento, number 13. Substitutions now for UCAP as Jason Hammer enters the ball game for Benjamin. Rock, Garb, he's gonna drive the lane, puts up a reverse layup, no good. Wagner comes down with the rebound. Strain. Hammer, now back to Strain. Eight minutes left. Sovenance, they're gonna call a foul underneath. That's gonna be on Aiden Rock. That is Aiden's second foul, sixth on the team. Rock is going to sit out. Isaac Petruski, number 11, comes in for the Bayhawks. Benjamin, got it. Buchanan, rather, with the bucket. 38-22. Pimento. White, looks to drive, does, up the glass, no good, but he's fouled on the way through. That foul is going to be on Jason Hammer, that's his first, and six team foul. So for the rest of the half, both teams will be shooting free throws the rest of the way. White hits the first. And misses the second rebound taken down by Buchanan. 39-22. Buchanan puts it up off the glass and in. Nice shot there by Trevor Buchanan. There was some physicality there as well. Refs didn't call it. White puts it up no good. Petruski no good. Third shot is good. First two points of the game for Isaac Petruski. Bayhawks up by 17. And they're gonna call an offensive foul on UCAP. And that is going to be on Wagner. That is his second foul. And now Wagner will come out and Evan Keith will come in, number 33. Marcus White, Pimento in the corner, Garb will take a three, that's gonna be off the mark. And Buchanan comes down with the rebound for UCAP. Still has the ball, has it taken away, but gets it back. Sovenance on the drive and gets the bucket. 41-26, 15 point Bayhawk lead. Pimento is going to drive as they're knocked out of bounds. It will remain with the Bayhawks. 
6.09 left here in the first half. White will take the three from the corner. Off the mark, no good. Rebound ends up with Marcus White. Garb looks for some help. He's going to drive. Five on the shot clock. He puts it up, and it goes. A lot of bodies on the floor. Very physical first half. Carvin's Garb with his fourth point. 43-26 is the score. Strain all the way, no good. Rebound. Pimento, long outlet pass. Garb for two. Biggest lead for the Bayhawks. It's 19 points, 45 to 26. Hammer will take the three and hit it. Jason Hammer with his first point to the game for UCAP, and it's 45-29. Garb will take the shot from the free throw area, no good. Keith comes down with the rebound for UCAP. Buchanan looks to drive, puts up a running hook. That won't go. Petruski with the rebound for the Bayhawks. Pimento. Morin loses the handle, regains it. Inside pass for Garb is stolen away by Hammer. Train. Sevenance. Strain gets it back, looks to drive, and the free throw dishes it off to Keith. Puts it up and in, and he's fouled. Evan Keith with his first two points of the game. And that foul is going to be on Cam Morin. That's his first. Bayhawks over the limit. And Keith cannot complete the three-point play. Garb comes down with the rebound for the Bayhawks. 45-31. 14-point Bayhawk lead. White, spin move off the glass. No good. Petruski with the rebound. Hook goes. Forty-seven thirty-one. Strain, off the glass, no good. Offensive foul, it's gonna be called against Lucas Strain. That's gonna be his third. Devon Benjamin is back in for UCAP, and Strain will sit out with three fouls. As head coach Brian Fernandes doing some uh, sideline work as well. Wiping up some moisture from the floor. Three ten left to go in the first half. Bayhawks up by 16. White will take the shot. No good. Rebound. Benjamin for UCAP. Ball nearly stolen away, but Sevenins comes back up with it. Buchanan will take the three off the mark. No good. Ooh, that's a hard collision. And that foul is going to be on Hammer. <coughs> As he collided with Pimento. And that's going to put 
UConn Avery in the double bonus. So the Bayhawks will shoot free two free throws. It'll be Cole Pimento who will shoot the two free throws. Makes the first. 48-31. And makes them both. And timeout on the floor. Two minutes and 42 seconds left to go here in the first half. It has been pretty much all Bayhawks as they lead by a score of 49 to 31. As we said, the Bayhawks have been pretty much dominated by the play of Aiden Rock. He has 17 points. And Marcus White has 15 points to lead the Bayhawks here in the first half. On the other side, the pointers are led by nine point Trevor Buchanan. Jeff Sovenins also with nine. Michael Wagner with five. Jason Hammer with three. And Evan Keith with a pair of points in the first half. As we said, Bayhawks, this is their first home game of the second half of the season. And with uh, 13 games left coming into this contest, nine of their 13 games will be played here at home. Bayhawks come out with their same lineup. Petruski, Morin, White, Farnworth, and Pimento. And for UCAP, they have Hammer, Benjamin, Sovenance, Evan Keith, and Trevor Buchanan. That's their lineup. UCAP with the ball. Buchanan. Ball tipped out of bounds. It will remain with UCAP. Aiden Rock comes back in. And Cam Morin will sit out. Fifteen on the shot clock. Four on the shot. Three, two, Buchanan gets it off, and the ball is no good. And the ball is recovered by UCAP. Benjamin will go all the way, no good. Tipped up, Petruski with the rebound for the Bayhawks. Two minutes left to go in half number one. Bayhawks up by 18. Petruski no good, gets his own rebound. And it's gonna be a jump ball, it's gonna be Bayhawks basketball. White drives up, no good, but he's fouled underneath. Foul is going to be on Trevor Buchanan. That's his third. And Marcus White will be on the line to shoot two. White makes the first. And makes them both. 20 point Bayhawk lead, the largest of the game, 51-31. 140 left to go in the first half. Benjamin traveled. Farnworth 
will put up a three. It's going to be off the mark. Rebound. Rock can't get the putback to go. Rebound by Hammer for Yukon Avery. And he's fouled in the backcourt by Devin Cruz, who's in the ball game for the Bayhawks. Jason Hammer will be on the line to shoot one and one. Hammer makes the first. He has four points in the first half. And he makes them both. 51-33. Ball is stripped away, taken away, but Rock gets it back. Spin move, up and in. Big first half for Aiden Rock, 19 points, 53-33. Bayhawks back up by 20. Sevenance will take a three. Air ball no good. Rock with the rebound. Comes back the other way. White. Farnworth. Passes up the three. Will drive. Puts it up. No good. He gets his own rebound. 30 seconds left in the first half. All alone, Aiden Rock for another two. 55-33. Shot clock is off. 20 seconds left to go here in the first half. Wagner almost has it stolen. Hammer, a long three, off the mark, no good. Benjamin with the rebound, under 10 seconds to go. He will take the three and hit it. Devon Benjamin with four points, and it's 55-36, and that's gonna do it for half number one. First half dominated by the Bayhawks, and we will take a break. First half score, Bayhawks 55 and the Yukon Avery Pointers, 36. We had the opportunity this week to also speak with one of the Bayhawks. Here's our conversation with co-captain Aiden Rock. It's halftime of today's game between the Bristol Bayhawks and Yukon Avery Point. I'm pleased to be joined by Bristol forward Aiden Rock. Aiden, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Of course, yeah. Thank you for having me. So let me ask you, you're from, from Westport, mm -hmm. right? Uh, did you play hoops over there, Westport? Yeah, yeah I played uh, varsity all four years. Um, under Coach Boudreau over there, yeah, and it was great. And how did you come to Bristol? Was it uh, one of your one of your schools? Was it something that, in terms of educational wise, you're looking just to get ahead on some things? Yeah, definitely. I think it was a uh, a great start to my um, college education. You know, it's cheap. Definitely uh, gives you an opportunity to play basketball as well as a freshman. You know, Coach plays freshman. It's cheap option. Get you know, and then if I'm looking to transfer after, yeah, it's a great start there. Definitely. So did, when you came here, were you looking to play basketball right away? Yeah, definitely. And try it out for the team. Obviously, you're a sophomore, so this is your second and last year. Yeah. What do you like about playing for the Bayhawks? Um, just the energy. I mean, I re it really does feel like a family out there. Um, you know, it all starts with coach, too. I mean, it's a great coach to play for. Got a great bond with him as well. Um, really respects his players, really respect each other. And then that's really, I mean, my favorite thing about the team. You're a forward, but you're also one of the captains of the team. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of diverse players on this team. It's always been a, a hallmark, I guess, of the Bayhawks. Is they've always you know, been able to tap players from around the region. Um, how do you handle that role as captain, and how do you try to keep everyone focused? Um, you know, it's definitely not as hard as people think. <laughs> uh, no, I'm joking. But it, it is great when you know, there's different players out there. You get a really sense for um, you know, people in Rhode Island and stuff. Um, I would say that it's, it's challenging to get everyone on the same page sometimes, but once we start rolling, um, it's definitely, it definitely feels very good to keep going, you know. Um, people respect, you know, the captains, which is definitely where it starts at. Um, if you don't really respect your captains, you don't really care for what they're saying, then it's yeah. kind of tough. But, you know, people respect each other. We treat people, the captains treat people with respect as well. So I think it kind of goes both ways. You know, on the court, uh, you're forward. Um, I believe the last couple of games, the one uh, prior to the break 
And then the last game against Eastern Nazarene, you've had some good scoring opportunities. Mm -hmm. You've also been one of the leading rebounders, I believe, in the entire conference. Mm -hmm. um, have you? Do you see, feel yourself that you've grown as a player, maybe this year compared to last? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think last year I had more of a, you know, I took kind of like a back seat last year. I was kind of, you know, the freshman coming in, kind of came as like the rebounder, the kind of the hustle player. Uh, I think this year. We lost some scores last year. I think this year that I, I need to step up as a scoring role, uh, definitely as a leadership role as well too. All right, where do you see yourself going forward? Uh, what's your major here? How do you see your future? Yeah, so right now I'm a business major. Um, my goal is to be an entrepreneur, you know, kind of run my own business. Uh, I'm looking to transfer out of here, maybe play basketball another two years, so maybe that's the goal right now. I appreciate your time. All the best yeah. the rest of the Thank season. You. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, definitely. We'll be back with more right after this. At Bristol, a quality, affordable education is always within reach. We're here to help you navigate how to pay for college. 68% of new incoming students at Bristol graduate without debt. The primary way students pay for college is through financial aid. Financial aid includes grants, work-study programs, and loans. You can apply for financial aid by completing the free application for federal student aid. Based on your needs, FAFSA can often cover tuition and fees, housing and food, books and supplies, as well as transportation. Applying for financial aid is free and it's easier than it sounds. Visit studentaid.gov to apply today. The FAFSA is accepted all year, but be sure to file as soon as possible so you can take advantage of more grants versus loans. Need help? Our financial aid counselors can assist. Visit bristolcc.edu slash financial aid to meet the team and to make an appointment. One type of financial aid you may be awarded through FAFSA is grants. Unlike loans, grants are sources of financial aid that generally don't have to be repaid. More than 49% of Bristol students receive Pell Grants. If you are a Massachusetts resident aged 25 years or older, check out the Mass Reconnect program. You may qualify for additional financial aid. Learn more at bristolcc.edu slash massreconnect. Another type of aid is work study. Work study can not only help you pay for school, but it can be utilized to help gain professional experience. Scholarships are another great way to pay for college because they also don't have to be repaid. Scholarships are financial support awarded to a student based on academic achievement or other criteria that may include financial need. Check out scholarship opportunities at bristolcc.edu slash scholarships at Bristol. If you're a veteran, the Joseph A. Marshall Veteran Center can help you maximize your education benefits. Meet with our Veteran Center team to learn more. To help you budget your educational expenses, set up a convenient budget with a no-interest monthly payment plan through the college. Once you've exhausted all sources of free aid and payment plans, federal and private loans are available. Keep in mind these must be repaid. Federal loans will be detailed in your financial aid packet, while private loans you will have to seek out on your own. And remember, if you plan on transferring, we've got you covered too. With more than 75 credit transfer agreements with four-year colleges and universities, you can save thousands by starting at Bristol. When I graduated high school, I really didn't know what I wanted to do career-wise, so I decided that Bristol was the best place for me so that I could figure out where that next path led. I began actually as a sociology major, um, and that led me to figure out that I was more focused on the psych side of it and I kind of wanted to mix those two because they were both for me um, and that led me to social behavioral science. I always knew I definitely wanted to continue and finish my bachelor's. I decided that UMass Amherst was the best for me. I was in the mass transfer program. I knew that I was going to be transferring to a four-year university afterwards so I made sure to set myself up from the beginning. Since I maintained a 3.5 GPA for my whole time at least a 3.5 GPA at Bristol for my four semesters. Um, I think I got like a substantial amount of money taken off of my tuition at UMass. Now I am here at the Boys and Girls Clubs of Metro South as the Advancement Operations Coordinator. Um, I'm one of six on our development team and I do a lot of fundraising, lots of stewardship with our community partners, gift processing, and just being a part of the organization and doing as much as I can to support the kids. I've had a lot of professional development opportunities being here. One being to join 
the Bristol Advisory Board, which was really exciting. It's mostly focused on Bristol and what we can bring to help it. To use a strength of mine and put it into a career was important to me because I want to enjoy going to work. I want to enjoy what I'm doing every day. I'm at a place now because of where I started, so I'm happy. <laughs> My senior year of high school, I decided I was going to play football. I had a, a bad injury then. It, I dislocated my shoulder, broke my collarbone, and that was it for me. So I got right into the uh, workforce. I started doing construction. I found out about a semi-pro football team that we had here in New Bedford, um, and I, I realized, you know what, it's not the end for me. There's my opportunity to play football again. I play tight end and I fell in love with the sport even more. From uh, 2008 to 2016 is when my injury occurred. Um, I played for the semi-pro team around the area. Having a traumatic injury playing in a football game, I had a neck fracture, which sent me to Rhode Island Hospital, then they sent me out to Spalding Rehab. I uh, had to relearn how to walk, talk, do everything all over again. I was not upset with where I was. I was okay, I accepted the fact that I couldn't move, but I can talk. And because I had my child, I said as, so, as long as we can communicate, I would be fine. Two weeks before I left, I started thinking, wow, I'm really not moving yet. Then I met a, a great physical therapist there that she believed in me. She had all the faith and it was everything that I needed. She stood me up for the first time by myself on a parallel bar. I seen that photo and that inspired me. I said, you know, I'm standing and now we're gonna get moving. By the time I left, I was walking about 50 feet. But for me to independently walk by myself, I would give it about three to four months that feeling of losing the ability to just do anything, to be able to stand again, it was amazing. It was like the best feeling in the world. When I left Spalding, I was going through outpatient therapy, and that's when I started to develop this love for therapy, because I was relearning everything, and everything became so interesting to me. So when I found out that Bristol had an occupational therapy assistant program, I was like, okay, that's my opportunity to go back to school. It was just a game changer from there. It was challenging, but at the same time, it was very interesting. I started understanding why my body was, or is the way it is now, with having hemiparesis. And like the love for the sport was just so strong, and now it's something that I can't do, but I'm hoping that at some point in life, maybe get into coaching, working with the youth. I've been here, came here from Brazil, arrived here 2003, been here since. My first job was at Dunkin' Donuts, worked there for 12 years. Then I got a job in Batley's Royal Dickness in Plymouth. Worked there for five and a half years as a housekeeper. COVID hit, I had to leave the job. I have two young children. So I had the time to pursue my um, education, my adult education. Of course, never know English, never been to an ESL class. That was difficult, but I conquer, of course. A year and a half out of work. My director that I used to work for as a housekeeper, called me and offered me a job as an operation manager in Falmouth Hospital. A year later, as an operation manager in Falmouth, I was offered a position as assistant director in Morna Hospital. 37 housekeepers that uh, report to me when I took my first high set test, I failed. So the week after, I repeated the test, the high set test of math, and I passed. I give the credit to the professors, they were amazing. I knew that would not be the end. They had the, the program of transitioning adult education to college. The transition program, it was the bridge to connect 
um, both worlds to me. I was offered a four, four classes, or two semesters uh, classes for free as a motivation for you to, to keep going. Working 65 hours a week, have three children at home, a husband, so easy it's not, but I'm getting there. I decide to keep going my own. That's when I earned the 2023 President Merit Scholarship. And that reminds me, me, my kids, and whoever is around me that they're gonna hear that uh, hard work pays off. My future goals, I usually take steps by steps. So my next one, I will become the director. It can be more in hospital, it can be another hospital. Even though if I did not have, have the help that I have now, I will be still choosing Bristol Community College. Welcome back as we are getting set for second half action between the Bristol Community College Bayhawks and UConn Avery Pointers with the Bayhawks leading by 11 by a score of 55 to 36 at the half and pretty much all Bayhawks and pretty much two Bayhawks as they are led by Aiden Rock with 21 points and Marcus White with 19. So 40 of the 55 points for the Bayhawks scored by two individuals elsewhere in the uh, first half. We had uh, Marcus Pino with two points, Isaac Petruski with four, Carvins Garb with four, Hayden Caton with two, and Cole Pimenta with two points. On the other side of the ledger, the Yukon Avery point pointers are led by Trevor Buchanan. Uh, check that, Jeff Sovenance with 11 points, Trevor Buchanan with nine, Jason Hammer with five, also five points from Michael Wagner and four points from Devon Benjamin. So that's the layout of the scoring in half number one. Bayhawks are going to come out with their starting five. Marquise Pina, Karen Farnworth, Cam Morin, Aiden Rock, and Marcus White. The pointers will start half number two with their starters as well with Lucas Strain, Devon Benjamin, Trevor Buchanan, Jeff Sovenins, and Michael Wagner. UCAP will have the ball to begin half number two. And they've got some work to do, down by 19 as we begin half number two. Benjamin having a tough time getting it in, does to Strain. And UCAP with the ball. Benjamin will take the jumper off the mark, no good. Sovenance with the rebound and the putback. 55-38 as Marquise Pina with a two-pointer, I believe, from the far side. And it's 57-38. Pina with four points. Wagner is a stone away by Rock. But Marcus White comes up with it. He's gonna go all the way. And the bucket with a foul. <laughs> foul is gonna be on Benjamin. That's his first, first team foul here in the second half. And Marcus White can complete a two point play. Three point play rather, with a bucket here. Short, rebound Wagner. 59-38. Bayhawks again still in that man-to-man -man defense that they employed in the first half. Buchanan drives, got it. 59-40. Pina drives, baseline shot, no good. Strained with the rebound. Here come the pointers. Bounce pass, Wagner for two. Fifty-nine, forty-two. White, spin, turnaround jumper, got it. 
23 points for Marcus White, 61-42. Bayhawks up by 19. Seven inch drives, puts it up and in. Seven inch with 15 points to lead the pointers and 61-44. Farnworth, bounce pass, Rock, got no good. Rebound taken by Benjamin, outlet pass, seven inch. Will put it in and he's fouled. Half foul is going to be on Marquise Pina. That's his third. Team's first foul here in the second half. Seven is cannot complete the three point play. Morin with the rebound. Rock, no good, tipped up. Out of bounds, it will be UCAP basketball. And timeout's gonna be called, I believe, by the Bayhawks. 17-49 left to go here in the second half. And the Bayhawks have a 15-point lead, 61-46. to As we said earlier, coming into the game, the Bayhawks are 9-5. and 6-4 and four in conference play. That puts them in fourth place currently right now. And if the season were to end today in the first round of the playoffs, the Bayhawks would have a home game. But as we said, still a lot of games left to be played. And the Bayhawks looking good right now, 61-46. But Coach Fernandes wanted to take a timeout. A little bit of sloppy play for Bristol. Hayden Caton is in the ball game for the Bayhawks. And Marcus Pina sits out. As I said earlier, too, the Bayhawks, this is their second game from the break. And they are actually have another pretty big gap after today's game. They don't play for another 10 days before they're back at it. And now Isaac Petruski is in the ball game and Aiden Rock looks like he has a cut or a scratch on his left elbow being treated on the sideline. So Petruski is in the ball game for the Bayhawks. Back to action. Benjamin with the ball. 12 on the shot clock. Strain looks to drive. Wagner's going to take a long three and hit it. Hi, right, Yukon Avery has cut it to a 13 point lead. It's 61 49 Bayhawks. Check that 12 point lead. White drives off the glass and in. 25 points now for Marcus White. 63 49. Wagner off the glass, no good. White with the rebound for Bristol. Long outlet pass, Morin up, no good. Rebound, Farnworth with the putback. It's actually the first two points for Curran Farnworth. 65-49. Strain, no good, tipped up. Morin with the rebound. All along, Petruski with the putback. Back up to a 16 point Bayhawk lead, 67 49. Long three shot for Benjamin is no good. Rebound by Petruski. Caton. Morin inside Petruski, guarded by Sovenance. Back out, Caton will take a three. Off the mark, no good. Strain with the rebound for UCAP. Yeah. 
Benjamin drives baseline, dishes it off underneath to Buchanan. Ball is tipped up. Who's got it? Buchanan still does. Is hit hard. Boy, a lot of physical play underneath. Nothing being called. The Bayhawks have the basketball. Caton will take another three. Hit that one. Seventy to forty-nine. Five minutes played here in the first half. Second half, rather. Strain looks to drive, turns it around. No good. Rebound. Sovenance loses the handle, gets it back, and a three-pointer is hit by Buchanan. On the right wing, it is 70 to 52. Bayhawks up by 18. Air ball by White. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be UConn basketball. Seven inch tries to pass it inside, and the ball is tied up. The seven inch gets it back. Up and in. Strain with the bucket and the foul. Foul's going to be on Isaac Petruski. That is his first foul, second on the Bayhawks in the second half. And Aiden Rock is back in the ball game, wearing a different number. Guess he had blood from that cut go on the jersey. Now wearing number 30. And a three-point play by Strain is complete, and it's 70 to 55. Bayhawks up by 15. Approaching 14 minutes left to go in the second half. Farnworth has a lane. Caton, wide open three, got it. Seven points for Hayden Caton, 73-55. Bayhawks up by 18. Sovenance, got it. 73-57. Morin. Puts it up and gets the roll. 75-57. Buchanan with the easy bucket for UCAP. 75-59. It's actually the first bucket of the second half for Aiden Rock. He has 23 points, 77-59. Sovenance inside Buchanan, another two. Big second half there for Trevor Buchanan. He has 10 points in the second half, 21 for the game, and it's 77-61. White all the way for two. 25 points now for Marcus White. Strain, no good. Tipped up White with the rebound. Morin, Rock, two more. Eighty-one, sixty-one. Strain, ball is up, Sovenants with the rebound, but it's taken away by Farnworth. Bayhawks with a 20 point lead. Morin, two more. Timeout, gonna be called by UConn Avery. Biggest lead of the ball game thus far for the Bayhawks. 11 minutes, 41 seconds left to go here in the second half. It's Bristol Bayhawks 83, UConn Avery point 61. 
And as we look ahead here in the second half, as you mentioned, it's been pretty much the Marcus White and Aiden Rock show as Rock now has 25 points and Marcus White has 27. So 61 of the 83 points scored by two Bayhawks players this afternoon. As we said, the Bayhawks are gonna have a uh, long stretch off. They are off for the next 10 days. They will next play on the 23rd of January. They'll be on the road to take on Holyoke Community College. And then the Bayhawks are on a big stretch of five games over the course of a little over two weeks as they'll be home on the 25th back here to play Quincy. Then on the 27th, New Hampshire Tech. Then the 30th of January to wrap up the month, they'll be here against Quinsigamon Community College. So those are the next games for the Bayhawks. Bayhawks have Morin, Caton, Farnworth, White, and Rock in the ball game. That's the lineup. UConn Avery looks to get the ball in. They got to call another timeout. As pressure forced UConn not to be able to put the ball in. This will be a 30-second timeout. And looking at uh, UConn Avery here in the second half, they are led by Jeff Sovenance who has 21 points, 10 right here in the second half. Trevor Buchanan has seven points here in the second half. Michael Wagner with five, and Lucas Strain with three. Jason Hammer in the ball game now for UConn Avery, and he will inbounds the ball. Does to Benjamin. Double teamed in the backcourt. Benjamin tries to break through. Still double teamed, they steal it away. White will get two more. <laughs> 29 points for White. Rock steals it. Gets two and is fouled. Benjamin is called for the foul. That's his second and third on the team. And Aiden Rock will try to complete his three-point play. <laughs> 28 points for Aiden Rock. 29 points for Marcus White. And foul in the backcourt. That's going to be against White. That's actually only his first foul of the game. 88-61. 27 point Bayhawk lead. Strain in the corner. Benjamin will take the three. It won't go. Sovenance with the putback. That won't go either. And Farnworth comes down with it. Outlet pass to White, and that's going to go out of bounds. Strain with the ball up high. Tries to penetrate, does, puts it up and in. Five points in the second half for Lucas Strain. And it is 88-63. Pass inside. <laughs> Bullet pass to Aiden Rock. Couldn't handle it. Goes out of bounds. Buchanan comes back in and Benjamin will go out for UConn Avery. And Pimento comes back in for the Bayhawks, and Farnworth will sit out. Oh, 
Keith back to strain for another two. 88-65, 23 point lead for the Bayhawks. Caton inside, Rock pushes it back out to Pimentel who'll shoot from the corner. That won't go, gets his own rebound. Rock can't put it back in. Evan Keith with the rebound for UConn Avery. Buchanan off his foot and White comes down with it. Nine and a half minutes to go. White inside, Rock, two more. 30 points for Aiden Rock, 90 to 65. Hammer will take a three off the mark, tipped up, taken by White. Ball tipped by Hammer, would go out of bounds, it will remain with the Bayhawks. Rock, off the mark, no good. Hammer with the rebound for UCAP. Strain, dishes off Buchanan for two. 12 points in the second half for, uh, check that, nine points in the second half for Buchanan. 18 for the game, 90 to 67. White has the ball blocked, but there's a foul underneath. And that is gonna be on Evan Keith. That's his first foul. Fourth on UConn Avery in half number two. And Marcus White with 29 points can also enter the 30 point club with at least one free throw here. And he's there right now, he's got 30. Farnworth goes out, Petruski comes in for the Bayhawks. Thirty-one points for Marcus White, 92-67. Twenty-five point lead. Sovenants. Off the glass, no good. Rebound, Petruski. Bayhawks come back. White, reverse layup. What a beauty. 33 points for Marcus White. 94-67. Stolen by Rock. He tries to slam it home. That won't go. White with the rebound. And they pull it back out. Caton for the pull-up jumper, no good. And rebound comes to Buchanan. Buchanan, it goes, and he is fouled. Hayden Caton is charged with the foul. That's gonna be his third. Team's fourth. Marcus White will come out. And Carvin's Garb comes in, number four. Free throw is no good. Petruski comes down with the rebound. Petruski got it. Ninety-six, sixty-nine. Twenty-seven point Bayhawk lead. Scoop up by Buchanan, doesn't go. Petruski comes down with the rebound. Rock off the glass and in. Thirty-two points for Rock. 
Strain comes back with a bucket. 98-71. Pimento will take a three. No good. Keith will get the rebound for UConn Avery. UConn swings it around. Hook shot by Buchanan won't go. Sovenance with the rebound. And they bring it back out. Under six minutes to go. 98-71, Bayhawks on top. Buchanan, floater goes. 13 point second half for Buchanan. He's got 22 for the game. 98-73. Pimento drives inside Petruski for two more. Bayhawks over the century mark, or at the century mark, 100 to 73. Hammer will take a three from the corner, won't go. Petruski with the rebound for Bristol. Rock has it taken away. Good hustle by Hammer, but he loses it out of bounds. As coming into the ball game now for UConn Avery is Chris Washington, number 24, making his first appearance. Marquise Pina back in the ball game for the Bayhawks. Replacing Caton. Pimentel gets it in to Garb. Being guarded by Buchanan, drives the lane, puts it up off the glass and in. One oh two seventy three. Strain will take a three, no good. Washington with the rebound for UConn Avery. Buchanan will take a three and hit it. 102-76. Ball stolen away. Buchanan, check that Strain has it. He'll go all the way. Shot is no good, but he's fouled. That will be on Garb, that is his first foul, team's fifth. And looks like Coach Fernandes will be bringing in more of his substitutions. His bench players gonna see some time today. as Lucas Strain will be on the line. Shoot two. Misses the first. Entering the ball game for the Bayhawks is Dewan Glover, number 14. And Cole Pimento will go back to the bench. Strain cannot hit either free throw, and Glover comes down with the rebound. Pino will take a three. Off the mark, no good. Hammer has a stone away by Rock. Up and in. 33 points now for Aiden Rock. 33 points for Marcus White. 104-76. Strain, no good. Rock can't get the easy bucket. Buchanan with the rebound. Buchanan with the bucket and a foul. Foul is going to be on Petruski. <laughs> 
Trevor Buchanan is having quite a second half. 16 points in the second half. 25 for the game. And he'll be in to see if he can get the three-point play as Aiden Rock leaves the ball game. Marcus White is out of the ball game. Devin Cruz back in for the Bayhawks. So it looks like Rock and White will end their day, each with 33 points. Buchanan cannot complete the three-point play. 104-78. Glover off the hands of Cruz, out of bounds. It will be UCAP basketball. Three minutes and 20 seconds left to go. All Bayhawks. Taking the shot off the mark was Jose Balesca for UConn Avery. He is in the ball game. Pass inside. Ball is knocked out of bounds. It will be UConn Avery basketball. More substitutions again for UCAP as Josiah Perez enters the ball game. Perez has it. Buchanan still in there. He will take the shot. No good. Rebound knocked out of bounds. It will stay with UCAP. One oh six seventy eight. Washington with the shot. Air ball no good. And it was actually tipped by the Bayhawks and it will remain with Yukon Avery. Foul on the attempted steal, and that will be on Dewan Glover. So the scoring has been fast and furious. I actually, I think, miscalculated. Looks like Aiden Rock will end the game with 34 points, and Marcus White with 33. One and one now, and on the line for UConn Avery is Josiah Perez, number 15. Makes the first. 106.79. Makes them both. 106 to 80. Garb tries to go in. It is blocked, but there's going to be a foul on the play. That foul will be on Josiah Perez. That's his first fourth team foul for UCAP. But Carvin's guard will be on the line to shoot two. Short on the first. 2.09 left to go in the ball game. Carr makes one of two, 107 to 80. Washington drives baseline, just up Buchanan, back to Washington. And the floater goes in for Perez. He has four points, 107-82.
Garb will take a three off the mark. Rebound taken by Hammer. Buchanan is going to be called with the offensive foul. As he tried to push off a little bit. And now Buchanan's going to come out for the ball game. 25 points for Trevor Buchanan to lead UConn Avery. A minute and a half to go, 107-82. Glover. Cruz no good, rebound taken down by Washington. Stolen away by Glover. And he gets the bucket. First two points for Dewan Glover, 109-82. One minute left. Perez with the long three, no good. Tipped up, Petruski gets the rebound. And there's gonna be a foul that will be called on Josiah Perez. And UConn Avery not over the limit, they are now. Will be the rest of the way. 54.2 point, uh, seconds to go here in the ball game. Oh, stolen away. Hammer. Perez in the lane for two. 109.84. And the ball stolen away by Yukon Avery. And stolen back by Glover. Garb. No good, rebound. Pimentel no good. And UConn Avery comes down with it. Perez, hammer for two. 109.86. Shot clock is off. Strong effort this afternoon by the Bayhawks. It was close early on, but the Bayhawks took it away by the Proficient scoring by both Aiden Rock and Marcus White. And they're going to come away with their 10th victory of the season. <laughs> Bayhawks led by 34 points by Aiden Rock, 33 by Marcus White. They win going away here this afternoon. The final score, the Bristol Community College Bayhawks, 109. The UConn Avery Point Pointers, 86. like to thank Steve Rice, who's here on hand to provide the technical support of this afternoon's game. Thank you for joining us. Joining us, I'm Keith Tebow. The final score once again, Bristol Bayhawks 109, UConn Avery 86. Have a good afternoon.